I love graphs. Complete graphs, bipartite graphs, cyclic graphs, weighted graphs, directed graphs, star graphs, and GraphQL. The last one is of course not a type of graph, but a querying language. And you should use it instead of REST for your frontend. It's much better for complex apps. Let's divide the explanation into the two fundamental building blocks for any query language. The data reading, the get in REST, the data mutations, this is the post, put, patch or delete in REST. We'll get back to writing later and start out by focusing on reading data. Let's explain with an example. Say we have this product. It's a social media app where you log in and see posts from your friends in the feed. First, we authenticate the user, getting the user ID. Then we do five things in parallel. Get the user's profile for things like their name, their profile picture, or their age. Get a list of the user's friends and any friend requests. Get the chats the user is in. In series to this, get each user's name and profile picture that we chat with. Get any notifications so they can see if they have been tagged in a post. And finally, get the user's feed. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six round trips to the server, at least. Getting the chats might be far, far more, and our users have to wait at least three round trips before being able to browse. We also have a few other big problems. We must maintain many different endpoints. Each one must have high performance. If we want to add another page to our website, we have to create entirely new endpoints. Page loading becomes slow because too many round trips. We probably also load more data than necessary. And for each user, we have seven different connections instead of just one. GraphQL solves all these issues. But before using it, we must convert our business logic into a graph so we're able to query it. Starting out with our users. With the age, name and profile picture properties, this connects to friends, where the friend node connects back to users. Similarly, there's also friend requests. Then we have chat, which also connects back to the user. Finally, there's notifications and the feed. So it's a fairly simple graph. Let's start out with converting this into the GraphQL schema. First, we create our query object. This consists of a user, the current one, me, a chats list, a notifications list, and a feed object. The chat object contains a user. This has name, age, and profile picture. It also has a friends list, which just consists of users and friend requests. The notification object simply contains the notification text, easy enough. Finally, the feed object. We will keep it simple. It just has a list of posts where each post has a post text, an image and the number of likes. With the schema in place, we just need to replace the queries, which is quite straightforward. We start off with query query, that's the syntax for creating a GraphQL query, where the query's name is query. In that, we select what fields we want, me for our user, where we also request the name and profile picture. Then we also select the friends list with their name included, selecting only the first 15. We include the chats, including the name of the user and the online status. We select the notifications and the feed with all content included. We remove all the old REST API calls. Then we insert a call to relay.fetchquery. In the then, we get the actual data. And now, 
instead of six requests, you only send one. Amazing. Let's also implement the server. First, the notification. This obviously has two fields, ID and notification text. Then let's also create the chat object. Here we must include one method, resolve user. This is where we call our database. The user object has six fields, ID, name, age and profile picture. And it also has a list of friends and a list of friend requests. This also needs two methods, resolve friends and resolve friend requests. Then we just implement the other models real quick as well. Now our query model consists of me, feed, notifications and chats, each with corresponding resolve methods. In our server, we just add a GraphQL view endpoint and it will magically all work. So that's reading. But how do we write data? What's the corresponding of a post or a delete? Let's say we want to like a post. First, we create a mutation like post. It takes an input post like input, which contains a post ID and returns a post like payload, which just contains the post. In the client, we write a GraphQL mutation, taking the post ID as a variable. Then we use commit mutation, passing the query and the post ID as a variable. To implement this in the server, we create a mutation class with a like post field, then create a like post class. Inside this, add an arguments class containing a post ID field. Also set outputs to the output type. Finally, define the mutate method. In here, you write to your database and return the output value. And with that, you are ready to use GraphQL. But please, if what you're doing isn't very complex, maybe consider staying away from it. It might just add more complexity than you solve. And as always, there's a big cost to migrating. Anyways, that is GraphQL. Thank you for watching.